All right, so in this video, we're going over your Algebra 2 Chapter 8 exam review. So number one, is the relation between the variables in the table a direct variation, an inverse variation, or neither? All right, so for this one, remember, in order to figure out if it's direct variation or indirect variation, okay, you're either going to multiply x times y and see if it comes out to the same number, or you're going to divide x times y and see if it comes out to the same number. I mean, divide y by x and see if it comes out to the same number. So let's first let's try multiplying. 36 times negative 9 is obviously not going to be the same as 4 times negative 1. Okay? So we know it's not going to be inverse variation because with inverse variation, you multiply x times y, and if it gives you the same value, then you know it's inverse variation. So now direct variation, we're going to take y and divide it by x. So 36 divided by negative 9 is negative 4. 28 divided by negative 7 is also negative 4. 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4. So therefore, it is direct variation. Our k value is negative 4. So our equation is y equals negative 4x. All right. So number 1 is letter B. Number 1 is letter B. All right, number two. Number two says, suppose that x and y vary inversely. All right, so that's y equals k over x because they vary inversely. When x is 10, y is 8. So 8 equals k over 10. Write a function that models the inverse variation. So what we need to do is we need to find out what k is. So to do that, we're just going to simply multiply both sides by 10. It cancels out that 10. So 10 times 8 is 80, so k equals 80. So now we can come up here and just replace, whoops, we can just replace the k with 80, and that will be our function. So number 2 is c, y equals 80 over x. All right, y equals 80 over x. All right, so there's number 1 and number 2. Let's go to number 3. <laughs> Suppose that y varies directly with x, so y varies directly with x, and inversely with z, and y is 28 when x is 32 and z is 8, so we're going to find y, so this is 28 equals 32k over 8, so now we're just going to do this division, well 32 divided by 8 is simply 4, so this is 28 equals 4k, Divide 4, divide 4, so k equals 7, because 28 divided by 4 is 7. So now we can come up here to k and do the same thing. We can erase k and put in 7. Okay? So now find y when x is 12 and z is 3. So y equals 7 times 12 divided by 3. All right, so I can do this without a calculator. I'm going to reduce this. Well, you can pull a 3 out. That goes to 1. That goes to 4. So this is simply y equals 7 times 4, which is 28. So here we go, right here, 28. All right, and our because our equation is y equals 7x over z, and y is 28 when X is 12 and Z is 3. So the correct answer is letter B. All right. Number four. Designer Dolls, Inc. found that the number of dolls sold varies directly. So the number of dolls sold varies directly with their advertising budget A and inversely with the price of each doll. The company sold 5,200 dolls when $26,000 was spent on advertising and the price of the doll was $30. All right, so what we can do is one of these zeros will cancel up here. So now we have 2,600K over 3. We multiply both sides by 3. So we get... So we get 15,600 equals 2,600K. Divide off to 2,600. So these zeros are cancel, and those zeros are cancel. That was supposed to go with that one. So basically, this comes down to 156 divided by 26. 
which comes out to k equaling 6. So again, we can come up here, erase k, and put in 6. And now it wants to know, determine the number of dolls sold when the amount spent on advertising is increased to $5,200. So this equals 6 times 5,200. And I mean 52,000, I'm sorry, and the price of the doll is still $30. So we can pull a 6 out of here, so I go to 1, that'll go to a 5. So n is simply 5,200, I'm sorry, 52,000 divided by 5, which when you do that, it comes out to 10,400 dolls. So the answer is D, 10,400 dolls. Or if you didn't want to do this cancellation, you could just do, because you're going to do this in your calculator anyway. You could just do 6 times 52,000 and then divide that answer by 30. It would give you the same exact thing. All right. Moving on, number 5. Describe the vertical asymptotes and holes for the graph. All right, remember, a vertical asymptote is when you cannot cancel out a, some, a factor in the bottom of a factor in the top, and a hole is when you can. So here we can factor, we can cancel out the x minus 1s, so that means we have a hole at whatever x value makes this 0. So you set x minus 1 equal to 0, solve for x, you get a hole at x equals 1. This x minus 5 we can't remove, so we have an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, at whatever, makes, whatever x value makes this 0. So you take x minus 5, set it equal to 0, add 5 to both sides, so we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 5. So that looks like A is the correct answer there. So number five is A. All right, because remember, holes are removable discontinuities. So here we could physically remove the x minus ones, whereas vertical asymptotes are non-removable. There was no way to remove that from the denominator. All right. All right, same thing here. Describe any vertical asymptotes and holes. So the first thing we want to do is we want to factor the bottom. All right, we want to factor the bottom. So x squared only factors into x and x. Since this is plus, we know both our signs are the same. Since that one's plus, we know these are both plus. What multiplies to 8 and adds to 6? Well, that's 4 and 2. Well, we can see we can't cancel anything with the bottom, so that means we do not have any holes. So we can cancel out that one. We can cancel out that one. If we set x plus 4 equal to 0, solve for x, we're going to get x equals negative 4. Do the same thing here, we're going to get x equals negative 2. And since they're non-removable, that means they're going to be vertical asymptotes at negative 4 and, and negative 2, and we're going to have no holes. So number 6 is letter D. All right, number 6 is letter D. All right, moving on, number 7. Find the horizontal asymptotes of the graph. Remember, for horizontal asymptotes, you have to remember the little chart. If the, the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom, your vertical asymptote is the line y equals 0. If the top degree of the top equals the bottom, it is simply y equals the leading coefficient of the top divided by the leading coefficient of the bottom. If the top is greater than the bottom, you have no horizontal asymptote. Okay, so we have to refer back to this chart, and then we look here. The degree of the top is 6, the degree of the bottom is 2, so therefore the top is greater than the bottom, so we have no horizontal asymptote here. All right, we have no horizontal asymptote. So number 8 is the same thing, so we can use this same chart. The degree here is 3, the degree here is 3, so they're equal. So it's simply the leading coefficient of the top divided by the leading coefficient of the bottom. Leading coefficient here is negative 2. Leading coefficient here is 2. Negative 2 over 2 reduces down to negative 1. So the answer for 8 is letter B. All right, the, the answer for 8 is letter B. All right. All right, number 9. What is the graph of the rational function? First thing we want to do here is we want to factor it. Okay, so what multiplies to 3 adds to negative 4. Well, that's simply negative 3 and negative 1. And x squared minus 9, this is the difference of 
<coughs> this is the difference of squares. So this is simply x plus 3 times x minus 3. All right, the minus 3s cancel. So that means we have a whole at x equals 3. This will not cancel out, so that means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. Because remember, it's the x value that makes this set of parentheses 0 for the vertical asymptote, and it's the x value that makes this set of parentheses 0 for the whole. Now, if you look, all of these have a vertical asymptote at negative 3, and they all have a whole at x equals 3. So we're going to have to go back to our horizontal asymptotes, and if you remember, and here, our degrees are the same, so the top equals the bottom. And if you remember that chart, that means y equals the leading coefficient of the top over the leading coefficient of the bottom. Here, both leading coefficients are 1, so 1 divided by 1 is 1. So our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 1. Letter C is the only graph that has the horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. All right? Moving on. Number 10, simplify the rational expression and state any restrictions. So the first thing you want to think when you see these is factor. So, well, x and x, k and k, same difference. So this factor is to k and k, and then this is negative, so we know we have one of each. 2 only breaks down into 2 and 1, and the 2 has to be negative since this is negative. All right, now let's go to here. Again, k squared only goes to k and k. 5 only goes to 5 and 1. And the 5 has to be negative because the 4 is negative. So here the k plus 1s will cancel out, leaving you k minus 2 over k minus 5. And k cannot equal 5 or negative 1 because 5 makes this 0 and negative 1 makes this 0. All right, so it looks like our answer is, looks like letter D. All right, so now we have to multiply these together and state any restrictions. So the first one we can't do anything with, but we can factor this. This goes to Y times Y and multiplies to 6, adds to 1. Well, that's going to be negative 3 and a positive 2. And on here, you can factor out a y, which when you factor a y from y squared, you get y. You factor a y from 1y, you're just left with the plus 1. All right, well, that's a y squared up there. Sorry about that. So that cancels with that. This y cancels with the squared, leaving you just y. Nothing else will cancel out. So you have y times y plus 2 over y plus 1. All right, nothing else will cancel out there. As you can see, they didn't leave parentheses, so they distributed this through. So that's just y squared plus 2y over y plus 1. So that rules these two out because they don't have y squared. Now we have to see what y cannot equal. Well, what, what y makes this 0? Well, that's positive 3. We canceled out this single y. What makes this 0? Well, that's just 0. And then we're still left with this guy. What y value makes this parentheses 0? That's negative 1. All right, so coming back over here, it looks like the answer is b. Okay, so for number 11, the answer is b. Okay. All right, moving right along. We're almost done here. Number 12. <coughs> what is the quotient in simplified form stating the restrictions? Again, we need to think about factoring. So we have a plus 2 over a minus 5. That won't factor. And then I'm going to go ahead and change this to times and flip this over. The a plus 1 won't factor, so we can leave it down there. But now what multiplies to 15 and adds to negative 8? So we know that's going to have to be a negative 3 and a negative 5 because it has to be a positive 15 and a negative 8. All right, so those cancel out. And looks like nothing else cancels, so we're left with a plus 2 over a minus 3. I'm sorry, times a minus 3 over a plus 1. And now what can a not equal? Well, we canceled out the a minus 5. So what a value makes that 0? Well, that's positive 5. 
We're left with an a plus 1 here. So what makes that 0? Well, that's negative 1. Now, what we also have to look at here is this polynomial started out in the bottom. Okay, It started out in the bottom. So we also have to look at this a, a minus 3 right here. This can't equal 0 either, only because it started out in the bottom. If it hadn't have started out in the bottom, it wouldn't have mattered. But since it did, what a value makes this 0? Well, that's 3. So a can't be 3 either, because that makes our original denominator 0. Okay, we already took care of the 5 because it canceled with that, so we already took care of the 5, so we just have to keep in mind of that 3. So our final is a plus 2, a minus 3 over a plus 1, and you can't, be, so it looks like a. All right, number 12 is a. All right, 13, what is the least common multiple of those two polynomials? Well, the first thing you want to do is factor those two polynomials. So this factors to x and x. Plus and minus means these are both negative. And it multiplies to 6, adds to 7. Well, that's 6 and 1. And then over here, we have x and x. This is negative, so we know we have one of each. And then multiplies to 4, adds to 3. Well, that's a positive 4 and a negative 1. So our common denominator, we have to have the x minus 1. That's in both. Now, we have an x minus 6 here that we don't have over here. So that means we're going to have to multiply this by x minus 6. And then over here, we have an x plus 4 that's not over here. So we're going to have to multiply this by x plus 4. So that right there is our common, our least common multiple, x plus 4, x minus 6, x minus 1. So the answer is A. All right, the answer is A. OK? Remember, your least common multiple is the smallest number that they can all multiply into. Don't confuse it with the least common factor. Okay, Least common multiple is the smallest number they can all multiply into. And when you have you know, factors like this and sets of parentheses, it's simply all the sets of parentheses. Okay, So here we had an x minus 6 and an x minus 1 that we started with. Over here we started with a plus 4 and a minus 1. So we have to have x minus 6, x minus 1, and x plus 4 because those are the three that are in both of them, okay? So let's go to number 14 now. Simplify the sum. All right, so we have to factor. So this is going to be a and a. Both the signs are plus, so it's plus and plus. Multiplies to 10, adds to 7. Well, that's 5 and 2 over. Uh, this is a and a. It's a negative 15, so we know this is plus and minus. Multiplies to 15, adds to 2. So that's 5 and 3. So the 5 will have to be positive because this 2 is positive. Plus 10 over a minus 3. Well, are we missing anything over here that we have over here in the denominator? The answer is no, because we only have an a minus 3 here, and we have an a minus 3 here. Are we missing anything over here that we have over here? Yes, we do not have an a plus 5 over here, so we have to multiply the top and bottom by a plus 5. Okay? So now we have a plus 5 times a plus 2 plus 10 times a plus 5 over a minus 3 times a plus 5. Now, if you notice, we have an a plus 5 on both sides of the plus sign here. So what that means is we can factor that out. So we have an a plus 5 times a plus 2 plus 10. Because right? we're left here with the a plus 2, and over here we're left with the plus 10 over the a minus 3 times the a plus 5. Well, now the a plus 5s will cancel out. This 2 and this 10 will go to a plus 12. All right, so our final answer is a plus 12 over a minus 3. So for 14, the answer is a. All right, so for 14, the answer is a. All right, don't forget about that. We, after you simplify and you get your common denominators, look for stuff that can still cancel out with the bottom. All right, look for stuff that can still cancel out with the bottom. All right, number 15, we're almost done. First thing you want to do is factor. 
So what multiplies to 30 and we'll add to 1? Well, that's a plus 6 and a minus 5. And then what multiplies to 40 and adds to 3? That's a D. D, this is negative. And this is negative. So what multiplies to 40 and adds to 3? That's 8 times 5. Oops, no, one of these is going to be positive. So that's 8 and 5. And then this is plus. Again, factor, factor, factor. We have D and D. And then it adds, it multiplies to 48 and adds to 14. Well, that's 6 and 8. And then down here as well, factor. We have D minus 8 and D plus 6. All right, so there we go. So we have <coughs> so we have everything factored out now. Now we just have to combine our denominators. Okay, so we have to figure out our common denominator. Well, it looks like well, it looks like we're gonna have to multiply everything over here by everything over here and do the same thing for both sides. So we're gonna have to multiply d minus eight times d plus 6, and d minus 8 times d plus 6. And over here, we're going to have to multiply by d plus 8 and d minus 5. So d plus 8 and d minus 5. OK. So now let's see what we got. Well, we have d minus 8 over d plus 6, and then d plus 6 again, and then what did I get an a from? d minus 5 plus d plus 8, d minus 5, d plus 8, and d plus 6, all over d minus 8, d plus 6, d plus 8, d minus 5. All right, so if you look, we have a d minus 5 in both of these. We have a d minus 5 down here. So we can factor that out. For room's sake, I'm just going to kind of cancel like that. Now, if you look, we have a d plus 6 here, and we have a d plus 6 here. We have a d plus 6 here. So the d plus 6, this will also cancel out. So now that's going to make this problem a little more doable. Okay, so we have d minus 8 times d plus 6, and that's plus d plus 8 times another d plus 8, all over d minus 8 times d plus 8. All right. So we can rule out A from the beginning, because we don't have the correct denominator. Okay, So I'm going to erase some of this. If you still need it, all you have to do is rewi rewind the video, and you'll be able to get it. Okay, But I need the space, so I'm going to have to erase it. So now we just multiply this together here. Well, that gives us D squared. And then that gives us, that's a plus 6 and a minus 2, so that's minus 2D. I'm sorry, minus 8, so that's minus 2. And then this will be negative 48 plus, and this is going to be D squared, plus, that'll be 8D and 8D, so that's 8 and 8 is 16D, plus, and then 8 squared is 64. All right, so let's combine these. We have 2D squared, because we already know what the denominator is, so I'm just concentrating on the numerator. 2D squared, that's going to be plus 14D, plus 64 minus 48 is 16. So it looks like the answer is going to be letter C. All right, so that starts out looking like a very, very complicated problem. You have a lot of factors in both the numerator and the denominator. But once you have them all written out, you can see that you can cancel out um, two sets. You can cancel out, well, I forget what they were, the D minus 5, and maybe a d minus 6, I forget. But you, but you can see that we were able to cancel some of them out, and then it made it fairly simple.
All, right, all we had to do was multiply this back together and get d squared minus 2d minus 48. And that's plus, after you multiply this back together, you get d squared plus 16d plus 64. Simply simplify that down by combining like terms. So you get 2d squared plus 14d plus 16. And of course, that's over the d minus 8 times d plus 8. The reason I knew this was ruled out from the beginning is because for two reasons. One, this would only give you a d squared, and we have a 2d squared right there. And 8 times 8 is 64, not 88. So that's how I knew that a was, a was wrong to begin with. All right? All right, moving on. Number 16, simplify the complex fraction. So the first thing you want to do is ignore the bottom and simplify the top. So we have 3 over 3b minus 1 over 2b. All right, so common denominator here, we could do 6. So multiply the top and bottom here by 2. Multiply the top and bottom here by 3. That's the multiplication, not subtraction. So this gives us 6 over 6b minus 3 over 6b, which is simply 3 over 6b, which is 1 over 2b. Now, do the bottom the same way. We have 2 over 3b plus 4 over 4b. Well, if you notice, I didn't do it here, but I will, I will show you here. This 4 will cancel with that 4, giving you 2 over 3b plus 1 over b. So now all you have to do is multiply this by 3 to get 2 plus 3 over 3b or 5 over 3b. Okay? So now you just keep change flip, keep the first one, change division to multiplication, flip this guy out, so it's going to be 3b over 5. Okay. Now the b's will cancel because you have because here it's in the bottom, here it's in the top. So now your final answer is simply 3 over 2 times 5, which is 10. So letter D. All right, so 16 is letter D. All right. Moving on, number 17. Do the same thing. Well, the bottom's already one fraction, so we just have to concentrate on the top. So this is x over 1 plus 4x over y. So we need to multiply the bottom here by y, so we have to multiply the top by y as well. So our single fraction for the top is xy plus 4x divided by y, and then times, flip this guy out, so this is going to be 3x over 7. Okay, 3x over 7. So this is simply going to be xy plus 4x, and then that's going to be times 3x over 7y. Now, at first it appears that our answer is not here, but it actually is. Okay, the correct answer is C, and here's Y. Both of these terms have an X in them. So what they did is they factored out that X. When you factor out that X, you multiply it by the 3X. So when you factor out the X, you're going to get 3X squared, and then this will go to Y plus 4, and of course the bottom will stay the same, 7Y. All right? So the answer here is C, because, like I said, both of these have an x, so they factored it out. And when you factor it out, you have to multiply it by the 3x. So 3x times x is 3x squared. Okay? Uh, 